Hi my beautiful people. Platinum Rose here and today I wanted to come to you guys really quick. I'm going to try to make this quick. Um, it's on being a car dealer and how you can become a car dealer. When I started my car dealer business where I got my license and started my business, it was actually $3,000. But I'm going to go through the steps and you guys can see how much would be in your city. Some of these steps you'll need, some of them you won't need. So it might be even cheaper. For most of you guys, I'm in Southern California, which is a very expensive part of the world. So for a lot of you guys, it'll be way cheaper to start your own business, your own car dealership business. With that being said, let's get started. I'm going to start right off the bat by saying in Southern California, the thing that keeps most people from going into their own car dealership business and becoming a car dealer is the cost of having a lease. You must have a place to conduct your business. If you are a wholesale car dealer, that place, and I'm sorry, keep in mind some of these could have changed by now because California is constantly changing the rules. So make sure, this is my experience, and make sure you guys check your local everything with the DMV and everything you need with your city, with your state, and make sure that whatever you need, it applies. So this is just basically an outline of what I had to do to become a car dealer. If you become a car dealer who is wholesale only, meaning you can only sell at other auctions and to other dealers, that requires that you have a place to conduct your business that can be your home in a garage, but the garage must have its own separate entrance. If you're a retail, you must have a separate place of business away from your home that you will be able to park your cars that you acquire and it's designated for that. What can be problematic for some is that number one, space is expensive in California and I will tell you how to circumvent it in a minute. So you have to have a place to park your cars and an office area, both of those. So for most leases, when you think of having a car dealership, you're thinking car lot. You do not have to have a car lot. You don't have, let me repeat that. You do not have to have a car lot. You can simply have a zone, and it's very important to have your place zoned for commercial. I believe it could be industrial as well. I, I believe the zone is R3. Just wait a minute. So it must be zoned through the city. Before you sign any lease, make sure it is zoned through your city to conduct business as a car dealer. So you can have a tiny little office and your two spots. It was two spots when I became a car dealer. It probably still is. It might be more, it might be less. I'm sure it's not less, but it, it was two spots. So my office is tiny. You get a tiny office. My office at that time was 425. Excuse me. It was 225, I believe, plus a hundred dollars for the two spots. It was fifty dollars per spot. How did I find the cheap spot? Tip. Go to Craigslist. Craigslist had not a whole lot, but a few. And I knew that I was not going to be conducting business so much that I needed a huge spot. Okay, and I'll tell you why that why that is important that you know that you're not going to be doing a whole lot of business inside this office, even if you are. All you need is room for a desk, and by the way, you have to have certain things in <laughs> in your office. But the point is, you don't have, a, have to have a huge fancy office or a huge fancy retail space or a huge fancy car lot. You don't have to have that. Get that. Eliminate that from being the detriment to having your own car dealership. So that's number one reason why people, oh, I can't do that. I can't have a car lot. It's going to be too much space, too much to manage, too much overhead. I can't do it. So they try to do wholesale and then they get overwhelmed because they're not used to working out of their home or it's too cumbersome. There's too many distractions to work out of your home and you just give up. Because by the way, out here in California, most homes 
home, um, unless you have a sprawling branch or something, or just a lot of acreage, if you're in a, what they call a track out here, meaning that you might, you may or may not have a homeowners association, you may or may not have a Mellon Rules, you might have neighbors that just don't want someone conducting business that's car related next door to them, or in their neighborhood period, or in their track period. So be mindful of that. So this is, I would not, I would never um, suggest that anyway. But for those of you who don't mind and can do it, do that. But in the meantime, try to find a, the least expensive amount of space while you learn the business that you can find. Number two, you're going to have to take a class here in Southern California. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be in most states to take a class so you know the rules. Class is not super expensive and for me it was one day. Six hours, one day. They tell you everything that's going to be on the test, they pre-test you, and then you take the test. So that's three things. Get your space, excuse me, you're not going to get your space first. You're going to do this class first, then you're going to take the test. And these are in no particular order, but you're going to have to get a fictitious business name. If you're going to do a sole proprietorship here in California, you do not have to register a fictitious business name. You can simply use your name. But I would suggest you incorporate in the least get a limited liability corporation. And don't use your name. You can't use your name. A lot of car dealerships do use, use the owner's name. I don't use my name. Uh, it's up to you. <laughs> I'm not so egotistical that I have to have my name on the front of the business. I've had a bunch of different businesses in my lifetime, so I'm over that. So you get your fictitious business name, you have to research that, make sure it's not being used, and you register that. That's pretty cheap. Out here in California, you must also run it in a newspaper before it can be registered, so you do that. That takes about a month. All of this stuff can be done at the same time. If you're sure you're going to do it, do it all at the same time. This way you jump in and you get it done and you have very little time to change your mind. Because trust me, there'll be plenty of people trying to discourage you from doing it. And if you're prone to listen to other people, this is not the business for you. You have to be able to make your own decisions or have someone you trust implicitly that's going to have your back and encourage you and support you to help. The naysayers that have not done it, and I'm going to do a whole new video, separate video, on how to... <laughs> anyway, the point is, keep your business to yourself. Just handle it, okay? So you're going to have your fictitious business name, your place to do business, your test taken care of, and your licensing. By the way, you cannot become a car dealer if you have a record. So, many of my, most of my viewers do not have records, but I'm not going to, <laughs> I just need to put that out there before you waste any of your money. You cannot have a, a criminal record. I'm sure some of my viewers are criminals. <laughs> you would like to make sure you read through what can keep you from becoming a car dealer. Read through the rules for your city and state. So, the, all of that takes about $1,000. You might be into $2,000 by the time you finish messing with your space, getting that space together. Because also out here, you have to have the space that you have if you're doing retail, meaning that you can sell to uh, consumers, not just dealer to dealer and auction to auction. You, want to be, you have to be able to have your name on the two spaces. They have to be labeled with your business name. And you have to have your the business name on the outside of the building somewhere near the entrance if not on the entrance but most likely if you're going going to get a tiny space you're not going to be there'll be a number of you maybe and you can have your your name on the outside window lined up under each other which is how my situation was when i got my first office for my car dealership also you have to have your signage that's pretty much free you're going to print out your signs, the, the no pulling off, the um, your license is going to be up that you're going to get from the city, and you're going to have that posted. You're going to have your business license posted on the wall. That's a must. And it's three signs. I don't even. I, this is the thing. I'm barely in my office. I'm barely in my office, and I will tell you why in a minute and how I conduct business by not being in my office in another video probably. I'm going to backtrack on a couple of things I've already said. 
that class that you have to take, that six hour class has to be live. You cannot do it online. And the fee for the class is, I believe it's $125. The test that you're going to take is a 40 question test. And I believe it was all multiple choice. And it's given by the DMV. The fee for the test here in Southern California is $16. And like I said, your class is, your six hour class is going to, uh, you're gonna have a pretest at the end of it. And they're gonna tell you right there the ones you need to know more thoroughly and the ones you are good on. It's really not a hard test at all. It's not like a real estate exam. Then you, have to download uh, the application. Download the application from DMV to become a dealer. There are actually 13 steps. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Um, the application for the to become a dealer is 175 bucks. Okay, and for your location for the retail, which I suggest everyone just go straight into becoming a retail dealer because you're going to want to do it within three months, I'm sure. So um, you're gonna to have to have a two foot sign that has to have your name on it and your address for both of your spots and on the outside entrance to your building and on the door to your office. So that's pretty much four signs. You may or may not want to put your phone number on there. So a lot of people do but it's not required. And the signs have to be permanently mounted. You can't have the movable signs anymore. Back when I started, you could actually have like a, a sign that could be moved from space to space. Nobody would move them, but I mean, I remember seeing some that were stuck in cans and stuff, the cement can, and then they'd get rolled around. You can't do that anymore. And by the way, once you set up your office, you will have to take pictures. And there's like, I believe 10 to 15 pictures of each of these things regarding the office. And they're gonna get real specific and let you know while you're in class what you can and cannot do as far as your signage and your space is concerned so that there aren't any questions. And again, you will make sure with the city that you live in or that your, excuse me, that your office is going to be located in if your office qualifies. Wholesale is easy. You can have a tiny office in a building that's 100 bucks a month. But retail, you have to have your office and then you have to have your spaces, your parking spaces too. Like I said, it could be more, it could be less right now. It's not gonna be less, but it could, it could be more right now. Then you're going to get your business license. And I said it could be a couple of few hundred dollars, but it could be as little as $74. It could be $125. Business license is generally pretty inexpensive. Oh, then you have to get a seller's permit. You have to get a seller's permit so that you can pay taxes. Seller's permit is free. You just go down to the office and get a seller's permit. Uh, that is the way they're gonna keep track of you being able, and this is a wholesale seller's permit so that you can buy stuff wholesale for your business. You're gonna do that and then you're going to pay the uh, Board of Equalization taxes at the, actually quarterly, excuse me, quarterly, you're going to pay taxes based on your seller's permit. And you also have to apply for the um, seller's permit that I just mentioned in person. And you'll get your seller's permit number on the same day that you apply for it. You can actually download that application online as well, but you do, I believe, have to turn it in in person. Then you have to get live fingerprint scan. You have to get a live fingerprint scan, and that is what they're going to use to trace to see if you have any felonies. I think you can have misdemeanors, but for sure you can't have any felonies. And that could be, that could cost anywhere from $40 to $100 for your fingerprints. Hope you guys are keeping track of how much this is gonna be. <laughs> I didn't add it up. But I know for sure I got, I got started for under 3,000. Okay, now here's where it can make a huge difference. You have to get a surety bond. Surety bond, S-U-R-E-T-Y bond. Now this surety bond is, it can be $10,000 if you're doing it for wholesale, but it has to be at least $50,000 I believe if you're doing it for retail. If you have good credit, this will not cost you a lot. If you do not have good credit, you'll still be able to get a bond, but it will cost you minimally $1,500 and up. If you're, even if you're doing the $10,000 one. 
so hopefully you guys have good credit if not don't let that keep you from starting your business because all of this I'm telling you you'll make it back in your first car or your third you know within three cars you'll make all the money you do invest back out of your business so don't think that okay I I can't do that because I can't afford it you can't afford not to really if you're halfway interested in doing this okay and then like I said you have to have your lease your signed lease agreement with your landlord or if you own a property property sign show them that you own it and that it's and they'll check to make sure it's owned you're gonna put all this together in your application for your dealership license and if you become a LLC you're gonna provide your articles of incorporation also in your when you turn your package for licensing then you're going to get all of your stuff together send it in it could take they will want to tell you that it could take two weeks but I know a few people who I've had set up it has taken them three months one was six months one was four months uh, I think when I when I did it I want to say it was three months at the time you know DM I don't know if DMV was shorthanded or or what was going on but it did take about three months and I had all I I'm very detail oriented and I had all my ducks in a row now if if and when you submit your stuff and you're missing anything or anything's incorrect or incomplete that will delay your licensing a lot of times you'll be able to get a temporary license where you can do everything as if you were licensed but what held it I remember now what held it up in my case is they were shorthanded with the field reps field reps have to come out to your place of business and visually inspect it I'm not sure if they're still doing that it was very difficult for them to do it back when I got licensed they were shorthanded they didn't know which offices were handling what because uh, they kept rezoning the offices and then some offices were open every day of the week not Saturday and Sunday but five days a week some were open three days a week and then some had short hours it was crazy uh, I have had to go down to a field office in quite a while and 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 even though they're very nice they're very nice it still could be streamlined so you want to make sure everything is correct and they do not have to go back and ask you anything for anything you know as far as your paperwork is concerned you want your pictures correct and accurate and what I would suggest is if you're not sure go back to your teacher who you took your class from and ask them because a lot of times those people have been doing it for years they may have even worked for DMV so they will let you know so there's no guessing and waiting because you want to hit the ground running like I said you'll be able to get a temporary license but even that takes a little while and then they'll you know do whatever they need to do to get you licensed generally and generally if they give you the temporary if they give you the temporary then that means you will be licensed because they're basing it on what you give them they just have to dot their I's and cross their T's and your permanent license will arrive in the mail and that's the end of this video I hope uh, I've answered a lot of your questions if you have any questions please leave them below in the comments and I will do several videos on this let me know also in the comments what you would like the next video to be on because I'm actually skipping around I really want to, to do some pre motivational videos because I know a lot of you guys um, you're on the fence you don't know what to do you want to do something and you're you need some pep talking <laughs> so with that being said uh, thanks for watching and please share like comment and subscribe see you next time Bye.